Okay, I lost my reading glasses, so no better place to buy a Clark Kent type of glasses than in the most fascinating metropolis in the United States. I'm an interventional cardiologist. I started doing veins about 12 years ago, and I'm here today to just give you an update of what's going on on stent on the, uh, venous disease. I have nothing to disclose. So why venous stenting? If you look at the literature, there's an estimated about 66,000 new patients uh, per year in the United States with iliofemoral vein occlusion, and very few of these are being treated. If you look at the meta-analysis of uh, stenting in the past, you can see that the literature uh, uh, has a very high success that mimics uh, what we, we have in the peripheral arterial, uh, in the arterial world, and also a very low complication rate. We don't have a single uh, vein stent uh, approved in the United States. Uh, the wall stent is the workhorse and is the most commonly used. It's a very strong and flexible stent. However, it's very weak at the end, which uh, makes it uh, not as good when we're treating Mayturner. And also for shortening, it makes it uh, precise placement of it very difficult and uh, it does have the advantage that it's retrievable until a certain point. This is a, uh, 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 the, the interest that the industry has taken lately on venous stenting worldwide. This is from clinicaltrial.gov. As you can see, Europe and the United States are leading the world, and these are all the type of research that's going on right now for uh, venous stent. These are some of the trials that I, that I pull out that are ongoing at this time in recruiting. The vernacular venovo stent by BART, uh, the stevical stent, um, uh, which is being done in Netherlands comparing the uh, conservative therapy versus uh, uh, stenting. And also the topo study that's been done in Europe and Germany, Switzerland, and Netherlands, uh, which is using the oblique stent. Mount Sinai has a stent registry that is being led by Dr. Uh, by Dr. Uh, Ting and Dr. Luckstein that uh, has a double arm and it's uh, trying to get an IDE for the wall stent for vein uh, treatment. The two trials that I want to be discussing here is going to be the, um, the Virtuous uh, trial, which is a feasibility trial for the Veniti Vici venous stent, and the Vivo EU trial, which uh, by Bard Silver stent. Uh, and these are two trials that were recently presented in London by Dr. Uh, different uh, investigators, Dr. Cabinet, Dr. Uh, O'Sullivan, and Dr. Stephen Black. The Vicia venous stent is a, uh, a two-part uh, stent uh, which uh, has an implant and a the disposable delivery system over the wire over a knife fringe system. It's a laser cut, self-expanded nitrogen stent. Provide with its, uh, its closed cell, and uh, it has a proprietary bridges and braces that is designed to provide strength and flexibility in the venous anatomy. Um, in the venous anatomy, you need a lot of flexibility uh, to prevent the crushing of the stands and the uh, formation of the stands. It's available on 12, 14, and 60 millimeter, and on 60, 90, and 120 millimeters. The, the trial evaluated uh, was a prospective multi-center single arm non-randomized trial, 45 cities worldwide, 31 in the United States. Mount Sinai also with Dr. Tin and Dr. Luckstein, the principal investigator participating in it. 200 patients of which 30 were the feasibility part of it, and those are the trials we're gonna to discuss uh, to, today, and 107 pivotal patients. Follow-up period was 60 months with follow-up at 30 days, six months, one year, into completing the five-year follow-up. The indication was unilateral obstruction of either the common iliac vein, the external iliac vein, or the uh, common femoral vein, and also or a combination of either then, and shown to be more than 50% by venogram. Patient had to have a SEEP classification over equal over three or a VCSS pain score of over two. The exclusion criteria were those lesions that extended into the inferior vena cava and those that had contralateral disease of the similar segments that needed treatment within 30 days, or a patient that suffered from a pulmonary embolism uh, within six months of the enrollment. The, uh, the age population was very interested, which is different than what uh, the literature usually show. Uh, uh, an age population of medium of 44, the literature reports are 60 years old. And uh, the typical female to male um, ratio of more female, 80%, 60% of patients have post-thrombotic syndrome. Most of the patients were class uh, CEP at three and four. I'm not sure why they had one on CEP at zero when it was not part of the inclusion criteria. So the target lesions, uh, the mean was 118 millimeter with the uh, maximal uh, length of 247 millimeters. And uh, the pre-implant stenosis was estimated at uh, 85%. The follow-up stenosis was measured at 8.1%, which was a significant decrease in, uh, in uh, percent stenosis. 
some of the interesting finding of the study regarding imaging finding was that the pre-procedure venography in IVIS had a very high correlation for measuring minimum lumen diameter. However, this did not sustain post-procedure and did not maintain the same correlation. Also, they found that stent oversizing was significantly uh, more, seen more with uh, venography than with IVIS appropriately. So um, the endpoints results, only one patient had more than 50% stenosis at 12 months for a primary patency rate of over 90%. And uh, the composite major events at 30 day, which is another safety uh, endpoint, end was uh, uh, none, uh, no, no major events, with a significant reduction of 85 to 8%. The next trial I want to discuss is the Silver Cook Medical Trial, which is a fle flexible, also a ninth and all uh, shape memory um, uh, stent, uh, which also comes in 14, 16, and 60, uh, 100, and 140 millimeter length has a very good radio force, and uh, this stent was approved in October of 2010 in Europe, and it's being uh, used in Europe. And it, uh, it can be compatible with a seven French sheath and a nine French guiding catheter. Now, the, uh, it's a prospective non-randomized multi-center trial that, uh, for the treatment of iliofemoral venous outflow obstruction. It was uh, mainly conducted in, in Europe. 35 patients were enrolled, uh, symptomatic iliofemoral obstruction. Uh, the complete final data was collected in July of last year, and uh, similar inclusion criteria, CIP3, BCSS score over two, 2 month 12 month follow up assessed only by ultrasound. Patients uh, uh, were excluded if they had a planned intervention or surgery, except they were going to get an IVC filter or thrombolysis or thrombectomy, and also lesions that, ex lesions that extended past the IVC or the lesser trochanter, and if patients had previous standing. The demographics were very similar to the uh, virtuous trial with a very young age population, the same proportion of female to ratio. And uh, I call this the, uh, the Trump effect. It looks like we Hispanics are now immigrating to Europe here with 30% uh, uh, Latino population on the trial. Uh, they call it a real world study uh, that you can see almost close to 50% of patients that had a QDVT or a QDVT on chronic DVT. And the study schedule included a pre- and a post-procedure venography with a 12-month follow-up of clinical severity and also of ultrasound. The lesion characteristic uh, length uh, were very similar to what we saw on the virtuous trial. Uh, they did not assess for compression uh, on, the, uh, on the site reported tile. And when you look at the minimum lumen diameter, there was significant improvement post-stent uh, from baseline to post-stent. Also, if you look at the uh, venous disability score, there was significant improvement at uh, one, six month, and 12 month. Four patients did not complete the study. One patient died unrelated to other cause. There was one that withdrew and two were lost to follow up. And uh, there was one patient that needed uh, uh, reintervention, five patients needed reintervention, and those patients were excluded from the disability score. The VCSS score also improved uh, throughout the 12 month. Three patients had worsening of the VCSS score. One of those that had worsening actually improved after uh, the, the follow-up. The vivo -U, uh, CIVQ score also showed improvement over the 12 month. And the major adverse event were only two. One that was uh, a pulmonary embolism that was, uh, happened after the procedure that was thought related to medical management, and also a um, reintervention at 155 days uh, for an occlusion that was thought to be from a, a hip, uh, prosthetic hip uh, displacement. Technical success uh, was, um, 97%, one of the stent was uh, placed in the obturator vein and uh, had to be, uh, another stent had to be placed and procedure success 97%. So the Vivo EU was a very representative real world patient that there was significant uh, lumen diameter improvement, 100% at size, 7% improvement by core lab. And at one year, the rate of freedom from occlusion was 89%, suggesting that stents may benefit patients. In the United States, we don't have a single stent approved uh, uh, versus Europe that has four uh, stents indicating. You saw the uh, live case there. Uh, one of the problems we have with the uh, available stents is that we need a good stent that is uh, str a strong, flexible, and uh, with good writer stent that, uh, that can surpass the anatomy of the vein. So the trial results are very promising. Hopefully, uh, we in the near future, we get uh, uh, approval for, for vein stents in the United States. And all the, one of the problems that we have, and I discussed with my uh, European colleagues, is that despite the availability of all the stands, uh, they're limited on the size, and they still end up 
using significant amount of wall stand. Uh, as you can see, most of these stands are, uh, only go up to, to 16 millimeters, so they're forced to go to 18 millimeter uh, to be able to cover um, the IVC. So thank you very much.